Hey there everyone, welcome to another episode of Euro Truck Simulator 2. So I've been trying to find the, trying to do the Orient Express route, which means the first leg of that is you have to find a delivery from Paris to Strasbourg, but I haven't been able to find it. I've been dancing in and around Paris for a number of days now doing short drives and stuff like that. And one just doesn't come up because if I look here, I just can't find either on quick job, external contracts or freight contracts. I just can't find anything to Strasbourg. So rather than do that, I'm going to give up because it's I, I want to move someplace else. So I've decided today that we try something a little bit different. We will try here the longest route we can find, which I think here is just saw one that was 86,000. Yeah, this is it. So we're going to go from Paris to Plovdiv with some mason jars. It's the longest journey we've taken, 39 hours and five minutes, over 2,600 kilometers. Should be a fun ride, taking us to three countries we haven't been to yet, maybe even picking up some random achievements in Hung Hungary, Romania, or Bulgaria. That will get us near to Istanbul, because I think I want to spend some time around here for the next chunk of our episodes or so. So we're going to jump in here and get started. Let's begin this delivery. I'm not quite sure where it is or how I have to go to pick it up here, but we'll see. And it's about 10 o'clock in the morning, and I think I'm going to be able to drive about three or four hours and I'll need to sleep. But 40 hours, it's going to take probably five sleeps. And I'm thinking this episode might be, might do half of it, do it in two chunks. So let's see. Oh, we're right at this building here. Look at that. We just have to go around to the other side. So we'll get this started up and we'll pick it up and then we'll pick up the episode right there. So here we are. We are all loaded up with the Trade Ox trailer here, packed with mason jars and beautiful weather. 10 o'clock in the morning should be a nice drive for us. Let's get this route on the way. 39 hours and five minutes. Longest journey by far. I don't think I've done anything really longer than 20 hours. So this will be quite the haul here. Be interesting to see if we can make it without any damage, although I think that might be a little bit optimistic. Can I go 20, 39 hours of driving without hitting something here? So we'll, uh, we'll get this going here. I'm pretty excited about this. Oops, <laughs> can't make it out without hitting something. Uh, let's try this again. I think I need to change my direction here. Not the greatest start here. Come on, gears. There we go. Gotta take this wider. It's been a couple days since I've driven, so it might be a little bit <laughs> like really bad omens to start out here. Let's go wait. Okay, now we're gonna go. There we go. Let's take this wider here. Now cut it. We should be okay. Okay, just slight details, but I don't think we got any damage, so looking forward to this drive. It's, this has been, uh, I don't, not having done something this long, it should be pretty interesting to see how this goes here. Probably do it in real time, 39 hours is probably going to take a couple hours, right? So I think what I'll probably do is chop it up into two legs, do half of it and then do the other half, take a break for a little bit and then do the other half. I seem to be struggling with rotaries lately, mainly because of this situation here where incoming traffic should stop, but it doesn't stop. Like that guy did stop. I did one around France the other day where someone just plowed right into the side of me in the rotary. And then I got so nervous that I took the wrong turn and ended up having a detour that was like four hours longer than I wanted to do. But yes, yeah, so I still got to focus, I have to focus on those rotaries. Anyway, it looks like we are on the highway here and off and running. So we'll, uh, we'll keep this going here. We're going to need to sleep in about three or four hours. We've got plenty of gas and uh, we'll keep chugging along. So I'll report back as things go, as things move forward. So we've got a little bit over two hours in the bank now. Uh, making really good time. I like the highways in France because you can go 90 kilometers an hour on them, which is really nice. So I just got the cruise control set on 90. Weather is perfect, and we are just making great time here. So okay, I'm quite a few toll booths, but that aside, pretty happy with the pace that we're able to make here. Nothing of note yet. I mean, 
it's been pretty easy driving so far. So just kind of really relaxing, just to chill here and kind of relax and just make our way across the French countryside. Imagine we're going to be heading into a new country here shortly. I'm not sure if we're going directly into Germany or someplace else first. I'm trying to see how fast I can go through these things. That wasn't very good. I'm trying to time it. So like, what's the maximum speed you can make it through the toll booth without ripping that gate off? I hit one of them once and it didn't really break. And I, so I don't know if they just automatically stop you. Speaking of which, <laughs> I went in there. Apparently they have closed lanes. I wanted to sleep on one of the last jobs I was in. So I pulled into the toll booth, but it was a closed one. And so the gate didn't open which was a problem because you can't go anywhere. I couldn't go forward. So then I had to back up, back into the kind of the entering traffic here. Whoa, a little bit of craziness there by me. Let's get the cruise control on, make this a little bit easier. So I had to back up into the, oh, the toll booth to try to get into a different lane. And I got out so I could get in, but then there was one of those long lines of trucks where there's just 30, 40 trucks and nobody would let me in. So I just, it took me probably 20 minutes to get through the toll booth before I finally backed up far enough and finally could, I was able to cut off a car to break into the lane to cut across to get through the toll booth and get out. So note to self, make sure you don't pull into one of the toll booth lanes that are closed. Not a good idea. In my defense, I was trying to go to the right side because there were places to sleep on the right side. So I wanted to get through the toll booth, pull over and sleep. So I went way to the right without paying attention to whether it was open or closed. And apparently you just sit there and until you die if you're getting a closed one. So, because nobody would come help. I asked the attendant, I was like, hey, you know, the guy's always checking his watch. It's like, hey, could you open this? I screwed up. And he didn't even reply. He just kept checking his watch every couple minutes. I don't know what he's getting paid for. But anyway, yeah, so making good time, having a great time. I think we'll probably have to sleep shortly here, but we'll be back in a couple more hours, maybe as I pull over and find a place to sleep. So, see you in a bit. So we are just about out of physical energy. We need to sleep. So I'm going to pay, oops, to try to pay the toll here and then pull over on the right. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon now. This isn't ideal. I'd like to see if I could sleep closer to, you know, seven or eight. So we go to sleep, wake up and the sun's coming up, but that's not going to work out this time. So we're going to have to do a little bit of nighttime driving. But I think I can just pull over here. Oh, there's a spot right there. Yep, just yawn. That was actually the first yawn, so that's pretty good timing here. I think it's going to let us sleep here. Yes. E, so we will catch some sleep. Our first eight hours of sleep. I wonder how many sleeps it's going to take. Now, make sure my light's on. Oh, engine. What am I doing? Start the engine. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I got a lot of sleep now. Okay, well, it's nine in the morning, so we'll do more daytime driving. That's perfect. Excellent. We don't need the lights on either. <laughs> I slept 16 hours. We are raring to go now. Can't tell if anything's behind me. Yeah, so it's bright. <laughs> Fortunately, this delivery, by the way, is a delivery that's, it's a, an external context or contracts delivery. And for those of you who are familiar with the game, you know this, but if you're not, there are two, three types of jobs you can take, basically the core jobs. You can take a quick job, which is just any truck from any city going any which way. And those you don't even drive your own truck with. And I'm not sure the time limits on those, whether those are game time limits or not. Then you have your freight jobs, I think they are, where you use your own truck and they're based on where you are, but they're registered by game time is how much time you have to make the delivery. So you may have certain amount of hours in game time to make the delivery. And then the external contract ones, which is one of the type that we're doing right now, are the one that's done through the World of Trucks website. And those are based on real world time. So I think we have something like 19, uh, 19 real world hours to complete this job, which means that falling asleep for 16 hours there won't impact our delivery in any way in terms of lateness. Had we been on one of the freight jobs, it would have though, because game time would have continued and it could have conceivably made us late. So glad we didn't sleep 16 hours on a freight job and that we're doing the external contracts job. Oop, kind of weaving all over the place here. This is kind of cool, this thing going, there's an arch way up above us here. I'd like to pull over and stop and see it, but I'm not sure we can do that. But other than that, other than sleeping for 16 hours, <laughs> I'm so awake, better than coffee. 
We're uh, making great time and we'll keep going. So we'll touch base maybe when there's about 30 hours left. So we're, we're yeah, approaching another five, 10 minutes of real time driving. We should be about a quarter of the way through the whole drive here. It's been really relaxing. It's kind of chill to do a long one like this. I'm also excited. I'll talk about this at the next break because I think it pays over 80,000 euros. We have 70, we started with 70,000 euros, but two of our hired drivers just turned in jobs. So we're up to 78,000 euros. So we should arrive in Plovdiv with enough money to buy another truck and put it in our Milan base. So we will get a truck and hire a driver at the end of this, ep at the end of this job, not necessarily at the end of this episode, because I'll probably cut it into two parts. So we'll touch base in a little bit, but making our way through the, uh, through the countryside now, just having a really good time, which is fun. So not sure this truck on the left here is doing the safest thing. This is a one lane each way highway. There he is. And he was trying to pass that green truck, which for whatever reason is really struggling with this hill. And he couldn't do it. So, but go uphill, yeah, might not be the most advised driving strategies here. But now we're moving. We made it over the top of the hill. So the road has calmed down to a single lane each way. I think we might be in Switzerland. I'm not really sure. But just really pretty. I mean, just woods and open fields here, countryside driving, just really kind of relaxing trip here. Wish this uh, really slow green truck would get out of our way. But other than that, really, looks like we got a turn coming up anyway. So hopefully we'll lose them there. But uh, yeah, it's just really fun drive here. Weather's nice. And chugging along, we're up to 83,000 euros now. So it seems like every couple hours, one of our trucks is just, one of our other drivers is just turning in a job. So we're starting to really see that kind of, kind of momentum build up because you got higher trucks and stuff. So. It's getting kind of fun. This uh, trucking empire that we dreamed of back when we had that first load of onions is starting to take shape now. But uh, we'll touch base in a little while after uh, we get uh, going a little bit more here. And here's a countryside, really, you can see in front of us. I haven't been here before, wherever this is, but uh, it's really fun drive. I'll do this one again. So here's a look at our map right now. We are cutting across the southern part of Munich, uh, heading, we'll go through Salzburg, Linz, Vienna, and then on eastward. So making good time, we'll jump back in now to our driving. And whoa. so we've got about a little bit under 27 hours left. So we're well over a quarter of the way done. Still just kind of chugging along. I got the cruise control on, cutting across the southern part of Germany here. It's really beautiful and making good time. So. We'll check in a little bit. I'm going to need to sleep in a couple hours, I think. But still uh, plenty of gas. Still got plenty of gas and uh, weather's great. So, so far, so far, the perfect journey. So about 24 hours left and we are just getting sleepy here. So I'm going to pull in. Looks like I might as well get gas while we're here. And might as well fill it up since it's so easy. And looks like we pull right ahead to that sleeping spot and get some sleep. We didn't really need gas, but yeah, might as well get it. So far, uh, so good though. We've uh, six o'clock in the evening now. We've been kind of driving through the whole day here, so uh, no issues and making good time. The, our other drivers here. Can we spark right here? Perfect. Okay. Nighty night. See you on the other side. Okay. So we will need our, uh, don't hit that. There we go. Don't want to sleep again. So we'll get a little bit of nighttime driving in here now. Let's pull forward and off we go. Get the lights on. Huh. There we go. Oops, this is a little bit like I better look out here. Oh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. I looked outside here, huh? Okay, now we go. Not the uh, best designed truck stop there. Car bearing down on us now, but I think we're okay. So we'll get a few more hours here of nighttime driving, and then uh, dawn should approach. We've got the mountains in front of us. I believe we are in Austria now, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, Heading east. 
Still cutting across Austria here. The sun is coming up right in front of us. Rather some spectacular rays here as we transition from night to dawn. Making good time still. We got about uh, three hours left to the halfway point. We'll stop. We've got about 19 hours left at some point in this journey, but daylight is here. So it's just a little bit past where we were. We we're cutting through Vienna now. We just have to, it looks like some urban driving here. So the highway apparently goes right through the city and we have discovered and unlocked Vienna, which is pretty cool. I am tempted to go check out, actually I'm going to go check out because it looks like just a slight detour to go left here and then check out those two question marks. So let's uh, take a little bit of a detour here, go left and Sorry, messing with the mic. We're going to go left, just do a little bit of loop, check out those two things, and then get back on the highway going to the right. Because I think one of them is probably a dealership, and one of them is probably a, whoops, we're going backwards here, a recruitment agency. So those are two good things to add to our collection. There we go. Iveco dealer discovered. And then, I'm not sure that we discovered the recruitment agency it's over there so we have to go left to do that so let's continue our detour because the recruitment agency means better drivers and we will be recruiting a new driver at this end of the episode so at the end of the next episode so we definitely want to unlock another recruitment agency here it's worth a little bit of time actually this uh this city looks rather large in the game here i don't know how much of it you can drive through there it's right there right not giving us there it is there's our recruitment agency right on the left got it let's get back on the highway here turn to the right and head and make our way to where are we going plovdiv still about 21 hours to go so we'll get out of Vienna here, and then we'll see you as we get closer to our final destination for today. So we've got about a little bit over 18 hours left. So we are 21 hours in, just a little bit over, oh, about 20 hours in, a little bit over halfway with the trip here. And I think this will be a pretty good place to kind of uh, pause and end this episode. So I'm cutting across the journey, let's take a look and see where we are here. I just want to get on a straight section because sometimes I found when I return from looking at the map, game gives me a, there's a little bit of a lag before I can figure out what's going on and this right here actually let's go up to this little rest stop up here a lot of wind turbines in this area now a lot behind us and on the side so I don't know if that's representative of the industry in real life but there are sure quite a few of them here I believe we are still in Austria in the eastern part now so let's pull off here just to kind of clean things up take a look at the map we can go this way, I guess. And let's go over here. Mm, speed limit's in here, too. And right here looks pretty good. Let's pull over, and this might be a good place for the screenshot for the episode, too. So we'll just uh, stop here. Let's take a look at the map, see where we are. So, yeah, looks like the eastern part. This must be Austria, right? And heading into the... But it's hard to see where the borders are and where the roads are. Heading to Budapest pretty soon, though. So, oh, wait. This must be Romania, right? We've left Austria. Is this Romania? Doesn't tell us. I have to work on... Touch up on my Eastern European geography here. But, uh, anyway, we've, uh, we've made it all the way from Paris. We started over here. Uh, all the way down here. And tomorrow, the next... Our next episode will take us from... Here, Budapest down through Seged, then cutting through some windiness bound before we get down to Plovdiv here. Then I think after that, we'll go over and check out Istanbul, but good good progress so far. I'm excited. I think we have, if we come back here, we have almost 100,000 euros in the bank right now, so that's pretty good. We'll probably end up with about 200,000 when we make the end of this journey because we're going to pick up 80-something. 
And then our other drivers might grab some in there. So time to go truck shopping and in our next episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, if you've enjoyed the episode, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. Episodes trying to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday now is with our, with our Euro Truck Simulator episode. So it should be the continuation and the final installment of this journey on Wednesday's episode. So we'll see you then. Thanks again. Have a great day and uh, take care, everybody. Stay safe.